Touch to the podcast. So, hey, Pavel, how are you? How is it going? It's been a long time, uh, around 10 years. Uh, I didn't see you, but this is the time I officially see you in my podcast. So, how is it going? Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, I'm doing great. Everything is fine. Um, yeah, I, I'm super happy to see you finally. All right, that's great. Um, because, uh, you know, the why I knocked you uh, after so many years, because um, yeah, you would be the perfect specimen for me uh, to do a podcast because um, I I basically focus on the education side or I focus on the career progression side. And you've been working in so many different uh, startups where uh, you like invested a lot of your time on building different startup companies. And um, most uh, important thing is you have done it in US. So lots of my audiences uh, are focusing on global growth or global career uh, aspects. So you would be the right person to ask, like, how how does it feel over there at US? And how did you cope with all the, I don't want to say the word, but sort of racism and stuff like that. And you are a Russian. How is it going over there at this moment? So, uh, yeah, please. I want to hear from you. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, regarding the Russian issue, I I've never seen any single like bad experience. Wow, that's great. For for so for like ten years, for sure. And the last year, taking like the war and stuff. Yeah, I didn't have like any single issue. Like, did that. did they ever ask uh, like, are you supporting Russia or Ukraine? Yeah, or- yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I chatted a lot with like number of Americans and non-Americans about the issue, but it 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 was not like, hey, you're from Russia and you suck. Or something like that, so, <laughs> so what, what about um, what about this? Like, uh, when people are hiring you, is it impacting at this moment? No, no, um, no. I I think still the most important stuff is your work experience, and then. Amazing your educational experience and then your personal projects uh yeah all right so even even right now when i'm hiring people and like interviewing people yeah. i'm not really checking if they're coming from different country or not like i'm going through the job interviews i'm trying to match their experience with what i'm looking for yeah all right yeah that's that's great because you know in bangladesh like that's the standard way that you uh, basically focus on the expertise versus what you were looking for and then you right. cross match and then you hire but um, in my country it's uh, quite interesting that um, I, I don't know whether they don't know the structure or they just do it for fun um, most likely most of the inter viewers ask this question like uh, from which part of bangladesh you were from or from which part of the world you were from, and they try to uh, connect uh, their background with the yeah. uh, with the uh, you know c- candidate's background, and if that matches, the candidate gets a you know positive vibe immediately. So it's a it's a bad thing, I know, but but it's it's a common thing in yeah. Bangladesh. Uh, though yeah. I I say to a lot of interviewer like don't do it, but yeah, they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was interviewing for one position a few years ago. Yeah. Um, with a big company in New York, and there was a, like a Russian guy as a team leader of the team I was interviewing for, um, and it was one on one interview. Yeah. And in the beginning, he asked me like, "Oh, where are you from?" and blah blah. And I said, and and then he said, um, "Looks like we are from the same country and like speaking the same language, but let's continue in English." And and then like we didn't touch that. Oh uh, wow common experience anymore was super professional yeah because uh, i have the experience just opposite like when they found someone with the similar kind of language they immediately switch to their comfort zone and start talking because i i I don't i don't think uh, that's a good thing from the interviewer's perspective because um like the moment an interviewer will do this, uh, he loses his credibility in front of the candidate. I think. Yeah. I I think the candidate thinks like, oh, this guy is easy, uh, or something like that. So tell me, in in last ten years, uh, I 
you know, how I, in our university, if you remember, while we were studying at HALT together, um, uh, there was this common term like networking, networking, networking. And we, we yeah. really like, I, I used to hate that because, you know, uh, I was uncomfortable being a brown guy with a weird accent, uh, approaching people and getting yeah. rejected. Uh, 99% of the time, how, how did you manage it? Because I, I found you uh, actually were a way better uh, networked person or, or well-connected person with other people than, uh, than myself. So how, how did it work with you actually? What was your secret or something like that? That time I couldn't ask because I was like competing yeah. with you internally. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah what, what what about you like what was the secret i think and, the... and be, before you answered that i was like back in my head i was like nah he's a white guy so no problem he would do that <laughs> so that was my perspective but uh, i i really <laughs> would like to ask you like what was it actually because you, you always you, you didn't have that clear american accent or something like that but still you you network with people pretty well so how, how did that work? I think, so first of all, I was networking with non-American people. Um, you may remember we were like attending a bunch of um, networking event. startup n networking mm -hmm. events. Yeah. Uh, mass challenge, right? Yeah, 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 mass challenge. Yeah, and like most of the people are not from US. There. I, I would say maybe 70% are not US uh, yeah. born and raised people. Um, I, I think, so there are a few ways you can understand networking. Networking, the, the, the first way to understand it is like going to networking events and just start cold um, dialogues with people, right? And just, you know, speaking about the ideas and sharing experiences, blah, blah, blah. This is the first approach. And the second kind of way I'm thinking about network is just building the network within your community, within your friends right okay. um and that what i started to do back then i was doing all those networking events where actually we found our first uh yeah the first uh job, job first uh, setup. with uh, yeah. with nikita bernstein right? yes exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was kind of the classical networking thing um yeah. but then i just started speaking a lot chatting a lot with my friends back from Russia or mm -hmm. their friends who immigrated into US a long time ago, just building that network of people who are sharing the same experience. And kind of that was the way how I found the com my second company. I, I think uh, what what's wrong happened with me, do you know? I think I, I was way more racist to the brown people than a white person, myself. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, cause, uh, I didn't do that. I was, I was like very yes. uncomfortable around the people because I had bad experiences with with brown dudes, uh, and uh, uh, no offense to anyone, but yeah, I I didn't have uh, such good experience, and I was like I chose to, uh, you know, get get away from them. Uh, I didn't want to be a part of their community or something like that. So I was like more like hanging around with you guys. But uh, I think after what you explained, that was a quite bad decision because I could have networked with the people uh, with my country and some somehow... depends. I, I didn't, yeah. as you may remember, we, we had like a big Russian speaking community in the university, right? Yes, yes. And as, as you may remember, I didn't really like hang out <laughs> with them. And kind of for the same reason, when you're coming into US, the best thing you can do is actually what we did. Um, we just started speaking with people from different countries and, you know, true, true, true. it was the best. But then the question is not like hanging out with people from your country. It's more about like building network and stuff. Um, it's, it's more of a, more of a, you know, getting personal, not in a wrong term, but getting personal benefit uh, out of your own yes. people because yeah. you can, you can actually communicate pretty well with them. Exactly. Uh, can express yes. well. They 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 know your experience. You can first of all, you can use your national language, your native language. Yes. Uh, 
and you are, as you may know, you are a completely different person in your native language. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was kind of my my main thing I did. I found my so we we had our first company in 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 Boston. We even work with you a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I figure out that we didn't have that much money and funding in order to pay me. Um, Absolutely. Going forward. And then what I did, um, I learned like mathematics, uh, applied mathematics, and I figure out I'm going to just ask all people I know within my kind of Russian speaking big community, like what's going on if those guys have any job openings um, related to kind of mathematics and programming. Um, I had to learn programming on my own, as you may remember. With yeah. Me, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I I, I would definitely pull that topic, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah go yeah. on, please, go on. <laughs> Let, let's let's touch that. Yeah, um, <laughs> we were we were studying business, uh, which is pretty far from technology. Uh, right? th that's what I wanted to say. Like, what you yeah. you were a mathematician. The the first day I met you, you said like, yeah, I'm a mathematician. I said like, okay, yeah, he's a smart guy, probably. I think I think I think the first day I told you I'm a shitty mathematician. Uh, that, no, that's you said I'm a saying. mathematician, then I said, ah, and then said a shitty one. So, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> uh, and we were at Galeria, if you remember, Galeria shopping yes, mall. We yeah, were having uh, sure. some some uh, lunch or some, some sort of break we had, and the whole university guys went there seeking yeah. for food. And, and we used cheap to food. look for cheap and free food a lot. Uh, I, I think Mark was yeah. the best among us to figure out the free food. Someday I'll talk he, to him. He was at the different level. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he was good. He was good. Yeah, I, I had a podcast with Mark, um, but but it was a pretty formal one. I want to do uh, one like, you know, pretty informal one uh, yeah. later, definitely. So, uh, Pavel, uh, about the about that part of the education, like you were a mathematician and then you uh, came to United States to learn business. And yeah. then you learned business, uh, you were doing quite well uh, in ev every subject. For some reason, uh, you have that likability characteristics. That's why all the faculty members used to like you. And for some except, weird reason, except, <laughs> except few. <laughs> Let's not touch that subject. <laughs> yeah. yeah, except few, like very few. That, that's like, you, you, you can even discard that part. Yeah. But... What about, uh, like, uh, for, for me, most of the faculty members didn't like me while I, wa I was studying, but uh, almost all of the faculty members hired me as their graduate assistant at, when I passed, yeah. pa passed that. So uh, while I was studying, people were, um, people were, I mean, faculty members were not, not so happy with me. But it's all right. Uh, part of the uh, part of life, and and then I made them feel that no, I uh, I am worth enough for their service. Now, uh, tell me you know, why you switched your first part. Like you were a mathematician, why didn't you stick to the mathematics part? Why you went to went for the business, and then while uh, we were doing business, you said like, oh yeah, you know, um, I want to learn uh, programming, and I said like, I have. Uh, some experience in visual basic let's let's start doing it and then you said like okay and even before i downloaded the software you already started doing some shitty programming uh, on on visual basic and then you yeah. started in few days i was like okay this guy's new this guy's enthusiastic uh, about uh, everything okay fine it's 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 cool and then you started programming python in few days and then you said like, oh, that is like the that is the front end. There's this back end. Well, we where we can use Django and this software and that software. And I was like lost. I was like, oh, I was I was okay till Visual Basic, and then yeah. why why this programming thing? And since then, I have seen you as a like highly adaptive person. You can oh, learn skills really fast. Like once, uh, if you remember, uh, you got fat, like really fat. We were uh, eating yeah. in that Indian place and you got really yeah. fat. And you said like, oh, you know, I want to change my body shape. I'm hating it and I, I will start doing yoga. And the next day when I saw you, I was like, 
that's the next level yoga. You were like, you know, doing headstand and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? I cannot even do 10 push-ups properly. And this guy is like doing all this, you know, um, Indian yoga shit. So, uh, yeah, how how is it genetical that you, you adapt things uh, quite easily? Or is it like you, you really practice, practice and practice and make yourself... Uh, adapted with the whole scenario or both it's pretty cool it's pretty cool to see this the way you described because i i remember this quite different uh, differently um <laughs> regarding the programming the way okay. i remember that you told yeah. me you know programming i thought oh oh shit he's a smart guy <laughs> oh, okay. i i want i, I want to i want to do programming as well then i tried to do like visual basic and stuff yeah I think I failed. I didn't understand how it, it can be used, where it's used. And I, I, I understood kind of the basic, like A yeah. plus B stuff. Yeah. And then it took, I think, months, maybe a few months or three months to learn some super basic Python thing. I was feeling so stupid. No, it was not super basic because you were flood mailing thousand people at the same time using Python. Yeah, but like... but like, it, I think it took like five months, maybe three months or so. It it was not like overnight thing. Uh, what I'm trying to say is two things. One is the skill I learned from my university, um, like learning mathematics and physics. It's kind of the skill how, how to learn. It's a specific kind of skill we need to develop, right? Yeah. Uh, kind of understanding the structure, understanding where you just need to do some repetitive work, mm -hmm. where do you need to be a little bit more creative, where do you need to ask someone for help, where it's important to figure out on your own, that kind of stuff, like a learning skill, right? Skills mm -hmm. to learn, right? Mm -hmm. And the second thing is just the repetitive work night after night. Mm -hmm. um, first few years, I was just programming as much as I can on the weekends without any like days off. Um, mm -hmm. Just doing some super stupid repetitive work. But but I, I, I think so you are you are trying to be humble because I have some other example. Like I gave the yoga example, then I will give you the guitar example. So you were not like uh, you were not so skilled in playing guitar, but you knew the basic. And then the suddenly free, you free started. Chords. I knew free chords. <laughs> and suddenly you started, uh, you know, uh, playing the thing. I was like, how he's picking this thing so fast? It took me so many months to even understand certain things. And then, then the, I saw you start rapping, and then you start singing. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Like <laughs> this guy's next level. And, and and then after returning back to Bangladesh, I was like uh, checking your Instagram one day and I, I saw like you started painting. I was like, what's wrong with this guy? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I just a, like learn. Th those are like good paintings. Like you, you painted mountains and a, and a girl without face or something like that. Yeah, and, right. And and I was um, like, wow, interesting. So how? how... I, 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 I think... One is I know how to learn. Um, oh, wow. I would I I can say it, I can I can put it in the following. I know how to Google it. Like it's mm -hmm. not only like when you're painting. I think that the most difficult stuff is to understand what you need to search in the internet in order to learn how to paint. So. Oh, okay. I watched a bunch of different YouTube videos, uh, how to paint. I was Googling stuff. So it's like a learning stuff. Yeah, for me, it, it, it never worked well because uh, I'm a colorblind. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll draw grayscale probably. On the um, white a few, and years, black. Ago, few yeah. years ago, you know what I figured out? I'm what? a colorblind as well. In a weird way, though. I, uh -huh. I see colors. Yeah. Um, I don't see a difference between bright red and bright green so at oh. some point if you have bright enough colors it's like it makes not no difference for me yeah like there's a fancy name for that but yeah 
for, for for me it was it's like um red and maroon and then blue and purple uh, all the blue shade like it's not a blue shade but blue purple sky blue i i don't understand green uh, some some green looks like yellow some green looks like uh, some uh, weird color i don't know i i can i mix match everything because orange yeah. orange sometimes looks yellow to me whereas sometimes ye orange looks like red so it's it's like close colors i i just don't understand but if you put yeah. every color uh, in front of me then i can segregate okay these right. are different yes. colors but yes. but not like uh, if you tell me like oh tell me what is this and then show me another color i i, I cannot yeah. I recognize. Yeah, but in the in the navigation apps, um, if you're gonna turn on the traffic, there's like a green and and red. And if you're gonna show me the map, I'm not gonna be able to tell you where the green and where oh, it's red, yeah. which is super. So let me tell you a story. Uh, from uh, like in our country, there's this place called Cantonment where all the military people lives. So you know the uh, traffic rest like traffic is pretty traffic system is pretty strict over there whereas in other places in in dhaka city or in bangladesh we don't we don't care we just break the rule and that's that's really bad i don't support that but yeah there are people who <laughs> break the rules but uh, inside that place like people are like driving like a drunk person and getting inside cameraman and that person becomes sober as fuck i like <laughs> pardon my language but that is what he does so so one day, and there were, there is no traffic police standing there. So you just have the lights. So there was this green light flashing really high. And I was like, and there was no cars over there. If yeah. I cross this light and if it's red, I'm doomed. Like I know someone <laughs> somewhere. And I was like, is it red? Is it green? Is it red? I was like praying and praying. And I saw uh, like another car is coming uh, from behind so i immediately yeah. pushed the brake i just wanted to see what that car right. does and that car just passed by and then i like oh, okay i can i can you know go so yeah, yeah. Uh, color blindness sometimes sucks while you are driving as well and um, yeah. at night time when you are alone you are kind of kind of doomed but you know in in city area there is no problem so Pavel, we we were talking about the uh, adaptability part. So you are yeah. so you you pulled up a pulled up an amazing I would say amazing point that is you know how to Google it you know uh, how to yeah. learn the skill. So being adaptive is is not like you get it in a genetical way. You you rather have it's a skill have, you can learn. Yes. Yeah, you have to have the courage to, you know, uh, challenge yourself and you say like I can do it and then you search for the ways and you figure out the ways and and the cool part is we have uh, we have Google that our ancestor didn't have. So yeah. uh, as a result we, we we can actually learn anything. Uh in fact, yeah, I I have learned video editing just YouTubing and um googling because I I had no idea about it and then when I Here started it yeah. I was like yeah. oh, okay and then um sometimes some people does a mistake that is more like mm, more like they start uh googling things they start learning and they keep on learning but uh, parallelly they don't apply it with the with the real thing for example one person is learning a software he's just watching the videos after videos and after videos 100% but, but not actually doing something inside the software by himself yeah. as a result at some point of time he gets lost and think like okay this is this is next level thing yes. and i cannot do it give up so i would rather say like if you learn a tiny little thing then apply it in in real real life and it will take time it will take time like for you for me when i was watching you i thought like oh pavel is like smart guy so he's doing all this uh programming thing whereas <laughs> you are saying you have a different uh storyline you said yes. like it took me five months to even understand the basic thing. yeah so another good thing is you 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 Probably you were faking it really good in front of us, like right? <laughs> <laughs> next level thing. And, and I was like talking to Mark and like, hey, this guy is like crazy. This guy is doing Python shit. I, I don't even understand. 
um, the language properly and stuff like that. Anyway, so uh, I have another question. Like, um, uh, uh, I have another question is like, so far, how many states and countries you moved since last 10, 11 years? And oh, wow. uh, and how many, like, how many jobs you, you switched actually? And what kind of jobs, like full-time or part-time startup or, or a big conglomerate or stuff like that? Tell me about, about last 10 years uh, movement. Um. So last time I saw you, it was Boston. Yeah, you you came Cambridge. to see me off uh, uh, in the airport, and yeah, and we cried a little bit. No, we didn't cry actually. <laughs> <laughs> we were crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, that that um, uh, that security guy was like said you are overweight, so you have to throw some some of the clothes and i said pavel just throw it in the garbage can and that, that <laughs> security guy was a black person and yeah. he thought like he will throw all these clothes and he said like okay you can take it you can take it and then yeah. then i i was able yeah. to take some clothes anyways yeah tell me so boston yeah. then i worked there for a little bit mm -hmm. then i found my second job in georgia the Georgia State. I moved there for like three years. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing like a low level computer science programming job there. Then I moved with, with a startup with a startup with a super small company. Um, and they, they oh, sponsored yeah. there's a there's a different. Yeah. So there's a difference between startup and the small business. Yeah, um, I know that. I but but it, I, I would love you to explain it for the yes. audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it's important to mention. So the, the way I understand, I, I, I'm sure you kind of understand it better, but it's scalability. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of small companies who, are, who found the market. They're mm -hmm. doing pretty well, but it's just not scalable. Um, what I'm saying is Instagram, right? It doesn't really matter if it's used by 1 million people or 10 million people, right? It's super scalable. Yeah. Um, if you are selling books offline, it's not scalable at all, right? You, you're you not going to be able to sell it to a million people if they're going to show up in your store. So I was working in the small company. It was like 12 people or so. We were doing computer science stuff, but it was like super specific for specific client. And we were doing like computational geometry stuff. It so in this way, it was not a startup. Uh, I worked there, and then I moved to Chicago, and I worked there in. So finance. from Boston to Georgia, then to Chicago. Okay, then. Yeah. And 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 there, this is another new company. Yes. Yeah. So uh, for, for how many years uh, your first company? I think uh, Nikita is, uh, actually filed for your H-1B, right? Yeah. So, and and that was for five years. Uh, oh, we, we filed for H-1B, then we had to transfer it for, to, to the new company. Okay. Um, we transferred that to the new company. Then the new company, they uh, filed for the green card. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna go into details why it's like. So now, now you are uh, you are a U.S. citizen, right? You no, the... I'm a green card. I'm, I'm a green, green card holder. We we're gonna get to that. Oh, okay. You are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, lots of people have this dream to have a green card because if you have a green card, that yes. means that's sort of like you are a pseudo citizen. You just don't get yes. certain, some some level of. Um, you know yeah. benefits but mo most likely you were a citizen of the country okay yeah uh, then chicago after that chicago after that i moved so i started working for palo alto startup okay. and then i kind of had to travel back and forth between california and maryland okay i was working i moved to maryland my sister lived there so mm -hmm. i was living there um so Maryland, kind of Palo Alto, -ish, San Francisco. Um, and then I decided, so I got the green card. 
I got my good experience in computer science and then figure out I'm a little bit kind of tired of hustle and, you know, hardworking. And I decided to go back to Russia to work remotely for the startup in California and just take time, spend more time with my family, friends and stuff, because that uh, time it was like already six years I was out of the country or so, something like that, maybe mm -hmm. seven. Okay. So I was living in Moscow for some time. I was traveling, of course, to Maryland and to San Francisco for work. Um, I was doing that. And then in a few years, and that's it. And then like last year, uh, me and my fiance, we decided to, so I, I found a fiance in, in Moscow. We were, yeah, we met there and we decided to move uh, to back to US. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So and then last last year it was like crazy so, traveling. So now tell me, like you mostly worked for um, small companies and yes. startups, and um, US is not not a cheap place. So yes, uh, is um, what is what? Uh, sorry, was it enough for you to survive? Like were you making enough yeah. money? It, it 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 depends. It was not enough for me to buy a house, uh, but it was enough for me to like rent a, not a huge apartment somewhere out of the city. And eventually, I bought a car in a few years. Okay. Um, so it's enough like to have a apartments and to have car, uh, but definitely not enough to like buy a house and live that American life uh, people are dreaming about. Okay, but but that's decent enough. Um, it is not, but slowly, like so, slowly, yeah. you kind of increasing your value and absolutely you know, salary. Growth. What about like uh, you have a lot of like you have a huge Russian com community in uh, United States, and what about them? Like, do you think like almost everyone you know made a way to U.S. and and could like ma made a life over there? Or a lot of people actually just went back because they could not yes. survive the the yeah. you know the it's hopping a wild game. West. Yeah, it's a wild west. Um, I know people who went to US and did pretty well. Um, I I know people who moved to US uh, because they got hired by Facebook, for example. I know people or like big tech like Meta, Meta. Netflix, Microsoft, bunch of companies. Yeah, I know people who moved here and then like started with a small company and then found like good mm -hmm. job in a decent, decent country, a uh, decent company. I know people who moved here and they are like hustling till this day, like doing some shitty stuff. Um, there is like it's it's a wild west. So 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 many stories. Um. So it, it's basically some people say like, oh, these people are from Russia or these people are from Europe or these people are from somewhere um, that belongs to the white community. That's why they went to U.S. and they survived. It's actually not right. Like, you know, UK president is a brown guy. Uh, see, <laughs> then uh, the, the Microsoft CEO is a brown guy. Uh, yeah. I don't know. There are many brown guys. Uh, yeah, I Google. Think it, de it depends. It depends on skills. Like, yeah, it, it's completely your, depends your, on skills. For example, skills. your English was way better than mine, right? Just because you have some specific kind of educational system back in your country, uh, we didn't. So in that case, for us, it was disadvantage. Um, but we no, have it was sexy for many people. <laughs> my one is like chicken tikka masala bro so <laughs> you can understand like uh some but yeah so I, yeah my point my my point is you knew english pretty well on the day one it's kind of big advantage for you right um for russians who are coming into us we we really have to learn in hard way um i agree on the other side yeah on the other side um mathematics and kind of engineering stuff is super popular in russia so yeah, yeah for us it maybe it's a little bit easier to learn uh, hard, hardcore stuff 
for some yeah. portion of people, not for for everyone. So, so if you if I uh, do like one survey, it, it's more most likely all the tech job like you know programming and then hardcore mathematic stuff. Uh, two kinds of people are doing. One is like Russia, another one, and the one part is India. Okay. I wouldn't say like South, yes no, yeah. South, South Asians, but I would say India, specifically yeah. India. So Indians are like, you know, discount Russians. Like when <laughs> when the companies cannot afford Russians uh, with money, they go for the discounted people. Like, oh, you know. I would cheap. not say, I would, I would not say that. Um, I know pretty strong Indian engineers. So mm -hmm. the way I see the market right now, it's not about nationalities anymore. Maybe it was I mean, in the 90s. True, uh, true. Right now, it's it's a crazy mix. It's a mix of smart skill. Korean guy. I would yeah, say like skill. skill. Yeah. yeah. You might have... So first of all, you have like a bunch of smart American engineers, like born and raised in the United States. Yeah. Like I would say right now, I don't know, 70% of engineers are Americans. Maybe it's like a first generation of immigrants it doesn't really matter but they were kind of <coughs> raised in us mm -hmm. then, then you have like a bunch of different uh, folks from different part of the world it's not it's not like russian and indian sitting in the same room cool now tell me uh pavel it's been 10 years and you've been hustling for so long and and you sort of secured your way in in united states and you are living there and probably will not leave this country so what's your goal now like that was your first goal like you said one day like i'm, I'm not going back to my country no matter what yeah you just said yeah. it uh, uh, why you said it, I will not talk about it. Those are very uncomfortable <laughs> topics. So let's not get into the detail of that. But yeah. your first goal is fulfilled. Like you made a way to USA and yeah. you're sitting in your <clears throat> place at USA. Now tell me mm -hmm. what's next. I don't know. Uh, there are a few things I'm kind of thinking about. And one, <clears throat> it's like building family and stuff around that. Um, wow. So thinking about buying house in the next X number of years, um, like becoming uh, that kind of dude uh, <laughs> with family, house, and kids. Uh, okay. Yeah. So what what about what about you start your own own startup, uh, a tech startup? If you have ideas, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a great question. Um, the way we were taught. And yeah, so the way we were taught, it's either a corporate job or startup. Mm -hmm. Like you can go to Facebook or sorry, like to, to Google Meta, Meta, Netflix and blah, blah, or do your own startup. It's like either one or B. Yeah. But actually there are so many things in between. You can, you can find a really comfortable place for you specifically based on your needs in the middle. For example, what I figure out for myself I had so many ideas for the startups and I thought like, obviously I need to start my startup. Like, because if mm -hmm. I'm not, if I'm not good at Google or Microsoft, this is kind of way to go. But then I figure out you can go to, for example, startup working on the different idea. Mm -hmm. And it's always like, if, if there's a startup with existing idea, there's still a bunch of like minor projects to do. Right, mm -hmm. you can find yourself there. So this is what I'm thinking right now. I'm the, the company I'm working right now is super cool. Um, it's it's like I didn't found it, but I'm a founding engineer and like it's it's so it's you have anything. stakes. You have stakes on uh, for this yep. company. So do what? What's your like? I I know uh, you had to sign mm -hmm. a non disclosure agreement and all. But um, have you ever worked with any any startup who has this exit strategy or something like that? For example, they want to you know raise their stake and sell it to a big company. Have you have you ever gone through such scenario? No, I think most of the companies are just focusing on the good companies are focusing on building the value, mm -hmm. and this value can be transitioned into M and A uh, or like. Direct like your, your stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, um, 
Pavel, uh, we have been like uh, talking about your professional side for for quite a while, and uh, we talked about networking, your adaptability, and then how many states you moved, uh, what's your goal, and things like that. But uh, right now, uh, like I, I I would like to ask uh, one more question. If you have the opportunity, like if you have uh, ten million dollars at this moment in your hand that's good okay yeah so what would be the like be, be very <clears throat> very specific and honest 10 million dollar is not a small amount of money so or uh, forget it 10 million is too much like 1 million dollar okay you get okay. one you get 1 million dollar in your hand at this moment um what would you be doing with it like I would be partying around, going to Las Vegas and, and playing blank. Oh no, definitely. I I would not doing that for sure. Um, okay, yeah. So what what would I, you be so doing? So first of all, I would continue what I I am doing right now. I I would not switch jobs and stuff like that. So, so are you going there, to buy? Are you going to invest it somewhere yes. in stock market or or I don't know yes. whether you were in crypto. The portion, or not? the portion, I'm gonna put in my savings account. Mm -hmm. Um. Or are I gonna invest in like super secure stocks and stuff? The other thing I gonna use to buy a property. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know yet. Just just because I didn't think that much um, about that. I I don't have the million dollars, so I didn't <laughs> think that much about that. But either buy a property as an investment, or mm -hmm. buy a property for yourself. I don't know, or like a mix of two. I have no idea, but uh, it's definitely not like potting and stuff. I, as you were, a, you were a mathematical mathematics person. You were a math mathematician, so uh, you know uh, you you definitely heard about crypto, right? Cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So, what's your view on that? Uh, like, do you think NFT is the next big thing? If if you already started, if you have interest on it, then then we can discuss about yeah. it. Like, do you think NFT? would be such thing uh, like in future that it, it's going to be inevitable. You cannot avoid NFT anymore. It would be a part of your life and a cryptocurrency would be the new way of yeah. transaction system. Do you agree with that part as well as uh, like how much you are into crypto at this moment? Because in Bangladesh, we cannot invest in crypto. We cannot do this <clears throat> NFT shit because, yeah. because it's illegal over here. So what about you? Um. I, I I have some experience with with the blockchain. I would say not the crypto. Okay. I was doing few projects for for the for the for the blockchain like Ethereum and NFT mm -hmm. in the NFT space. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about cryptocurrencies. I really hope that we can use in ten years. We're gonna all use Bitcoin uh, to some to some like real live transactions mm -hmm. i think slowly it's it's gonna grow mm -hmm. um it's gonna develop for sure the blockchain itself is gonna take over the world the kind of distributed independent computation and like mm -hmm. sense of truth you can uh, distribute among people. This is just incredible. And you can, um, okay, there's a cryptocurrency. Let's put it aside. There's a blockchain behind it, right? Yeah. And people are saying like, it's useless. It's useless. No one's going to use it. But then you see right now, first cases, actual like business value uh, when people are using it. And NFT by itself, NFT is not as cool as the technology behind it. Uh, the mm -hmm. way just the fact that you can secure some ownership of some random thing on the yeah. blockchain and then you can build another layer mm -hmm. uh, like a business layer on top of that and then you can exchange goods mm -hmm. over blockchain this is amazing and it's gonna grow um for sure and i think slowly we're gonna part of our life gonna be in metaverse not like sitting with with VR, uh, uh, VR. VR and that yeah, but like with iPhones with 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 your phones, 
with the way how you're working, with the way how you're communicating with technologists, we're going to slow, slowly go into, we're going to be synced into metaverse. Yeah. And in metaverse, there's no dollar and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And they already have a bunch of awesome solutions uh, to exchange goods and exchange mm -hmm. value. Yeah. So like, it's going to grow for sure. For for example, like metaverse, uh, you know, the, the concept of metaverse is already there uh, with with different games like, you know, uh, the yeah. PUBG and, and Fortnite <clears throat> and Free Fire. Yeah. Uh, you can you can basically become a character and then you can custom your game and then you can yeah. talk to the people, uh, interact with them uh, online. And in fact, uh, lots of game are you know um, lots of transaction happening within this game through this blockchain technology and uh, so, so, like some of the streamers are taking ethereum some some of them are taking bitcoins and and stuff like that so uh, i think it's i also think it's uh, it's inevitable that we we cannot avoid crypto but you know some countries are very skeptical about crypto because because of the money uh, you know because they don't understand yes. it first of all and second thing is uh, as there is no government control uh, the trust issue is there and yes. recently there are certain uh, scams going on with with different cryptocurrency thing uh, if you uh, heard that like logan paul did one nft yes. called crypto zoo and he was he did yes. like you know, he, he ripped off some people. Yeah. Uh, so now what about the, like, yeah, scams are going on. So regulations need to be there. Someday the regulations will slowly come. But uh, but what about the countries? Those are lagging behind. They When, when it will come with a blow, like everyone is using crypto. And if you are not a part of, if you are not in that game, you cannot, actually you can you, you are irrelevant in that ecosystem for example yeah. you will become irrelevant in metaverse if you don't know the backbone or the concept of blockchain or or the cryptocurrency transaction and stuff like that so those countries who are actually lagging behind like our country bangladesh mm -hmm. or or north korea i don't know in russia is it is it in, uh, what was the situation i i don't have that much of idea but mm -hmm. still uh, what do you think uh, what would be the solution for them or or they will just die or they will, <laughs> <laughs> they will just they will just not be a part of it and uh, they will lag behind the way they are lagging behind in do dollar game at this moment i i think i i don't know like as a country i i know as an individual the the best software you can have on your laptop is vpn with vpn you can work for blockchain startups mm -hmm. right so for, as an individual it doesn't really matter what your country is saying um maybe you're not allowed to buy bitcoin or something yeah. but you can work for the companies for developing blockchain technologies that's oh yeah sure. yeah yeah right uh, that, that so definitely we can so it's not a blocker. Um, mm -hmm. As a, as an ecosystem inside the country, yes, it's hard to build something if the government are not allowing you to do so. Mm -hmm. um, as an individual, you, you can do that. Um, as a so it's it's hard to build the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, that's for sure, and it really depends if you have like good venture capital in order to back up your you know ideas and stuff. Cool. Uh, as well, but you can, as an individual, you can part of, you can be part of that if you want. All right, okay, um, that's that's a great answer, and uh, yeah, I I really appreciate that you basically make some time out of your busy schedule and talk talk to me <laughs> about this. I'm being very can formal. We do, yeah, can can we do the following? Um, I, I'm sure you're going to speak with a number of people from your past and yes. present. Yes, absolutely. And mostly you're going to focus on their lives. Yeah. Can we, sw can we switch a little bit? Switch in a, so like, uh, you want to... I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to, I want to know what's happening on your side. Like, what, oh. what, what, what happened? It, it... For example, when you moved back to Bangladesh, how how does it feel for the first year 
did you feel like you failed or it was a relief? Like finally I can relax and no, like use your like business that. experience. Like I, you remember we were doing this GCG market research thing and yes. we were going, uh, we were getting certain, some, some of the customers and then uh, Roland left for uh, yeah. Switzerland and then Mark is about to leave. And I was like, yeah. Ah, uh, shit, man, this is not going to uh, do any well. Like I cannot do it alone and stuff like that. And then one fine morning, I just decided like, I'll go back to my country. If you remember one day I said like, hey, Pavel, I think, uh, you yeah. know, um, uh, things are not not falling in the right place. So I think I should um, move back to Bangladesh. Let's see whether I can do something over there. Uh, and when I was in the airplane, you were the only person who, like you were there at Boston at this moment, at that moment. So you you went to see me off to the airport and um, inside the plane, like till I reached to the home, I was like, you know, it's it's yeah, I cannot explain it, but it's like such emptiness within yourself. And I felt like. Oh my God! This this amazing years just gone, and I didn't even think twice. I just moved out. Like I didn't think of, uh, like I didn't give give it a second thought. I just like, hey, I'm I'm gonna go, and I went for it, went and buy a ticket, and I left the country. Uh, and when I came back, I didn't have any job. And yeah. trust me, I lost all my networks back in Bangladesh because I was busy networking in the US. Yes. Uh, and I was I was out of job. I was unemployed for like a like a month or so, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was devastating for me. It was pretty depressing. I I went into depression. Trust me. Uh, I I believe hundred percent. I went yeah. into depression and I I didn't like the feelings. I was sad. I was frustrated. I was thinking like I made a big mistake because I I should have stayed back. Uh, and what happened just a second yeah uh so uh but uh eventually eventually i i secured some job i i got, got into teaching profession and i i started doing making different sorts of con contents but yeah, yeah probably probably not all of them were pretty successful but but i kind of understood the meaning of my life so it was it was a good like I I believed later on that whatever happened happened for good with me, and and then things were going better, getting better, and I have learned certain like I I had this problem of uh, not concentrating that much on certain things. I I just lose concentration mm -hmm. very fast. Uh, but I slowly developed that skill so that I can concentrate. So I focused on my learnings and stuff like that. And slowly I understood like, uh, no, uh, whatever happened, happened for good. And I kept on working. But trust me, Pavel, um, if I tell me, if I tell you about the entire scenario, I wouldn't say that life itself is, is fair to you ever. So you cannot, yes. you cannot just say that oh, uh, life is not like life. Life is not so favorable for me. You cannot say it because it is like that. You have to take it as it is, and it will never be favorable to you. You have to make your way out. So I still I am facing um, some some issues in my life, and I if you ask me, Sabir, are you hundred percent? happy or 100% satisfied in your life, I would say like, no, man, I, I am not. I'm still searching for that satisfaction. Probably probably I'll get it in afterlife or or I don't know. But but yeah, yeah um, um, things went pretty well in terms of my professional life. Yeah. Uh, things went all right with my personal life. But uh, the level of satisfaction a person should not a person should get like the set level of satisfaction that I expected. It's not there yet. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, uh, so I'm still searching for that. Keep, keep, keep working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Uh, but uh, but as this is my podcast, so I will not say everything in details. Someday, yeah. someday I will like I will do like bunch of podcasts with Netflix, Netflix documentary, <laughs> different people, and and then I might call all of you to ask me and grill me yeah. because I would ask one question uh, right now, like tell me three things you liked about me, like awesome. Yeah. And tell me three other things that you absolutely hated, and you have to spit it out. Like this is like brain ejaculation. You have to say it from your heart. It it okay. should come within yourself. Like you yeah. hate three things about me, and you hate loved three things about me. Okay, um, three things I love about you. Yeah, you are honest. Honest. Okay. Yeah. Honesty. You are straight. Straight. You're not doing a straight kind of means talk. what kind of so, straight like straightforward. You want to say something, yeah, like straightforward. Oh, not the sexual orientation. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, like, in that case, I'm if, straight if, as if well. You, yeah. So <laughs> if if you want to say something, you're just saying without like trying to find the right language or something like that. So it's it's pretty cool. Okay. Uh I know it's I, I I think just uh I remember in Boston it was super nice to being around you just because we were laughing a lot and yeah. without that I I think we could kill ourselves like, yeah it was so depressing kind of like w- without like if you hard. if you um see like if you um consider the enter scenario minus our interaction, like the French circles, yeah. we were having fun in weekends and 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 in, yeah. in, um, every day. Uh, it's horrible. Yeah. Every time you yeah. are panicking, like shit, man, I don't have that much of money in my yeah. bank account. Too much pressure. Too much yeah. pressure. Yes. And the and um, the work yeah. pressure, uh, study pressure. It was like way too much. We stopped yeah. sleeping so many days. Like bunch of nights we didn't we, we didn't sleep i i don't sleep that much but for you guys it was pretty hard yeah. and now tell me three things you hated about me hated? you i i know you get you have like 10 10 topics on oh. that but you can say honestly uh, yeah honestly, honestly i'm struggling with finding even one no, no there's no. like right now like honestly i'm thinking i don't i don't have like a any strong point No, I I really I really that's, don't know. That that's that's pretty generous of you. I really yeah. appreciate. I would I definitely would say something shitty or like something honest and negative. But no, you're good. Like okay, yeah, cool. cool. That's yeah. that's cool. Um, now I will have a rapid fire questions. Like I'll ask three or four questions to you, and you have to yeah. spit it out. Uh, you have yeah. to say it. Uh, you have to be very honest. Uh, and as you are uh, some sort of, you know, show your generosity to different people. That's why I will not give you open-ended question like the yeah. previous one. Yeah. I'll give you close-ended question. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, is it uh, okay? Number one, is it business or mathematics? You cannot say both. The thing you like, the thing you're more most comfortable with. Oh, business for sure. Mathematics, like I'm, I'm yeah, I'm okay. bad with that. All right. So now, is it uh, Russian food like potato and and sausage? <laughs> Do you yeah. still eat that? By the way, sausage and potato. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sausage and potato or or that Indian place chicken tikka masala. Ah, oh, Indian place <laughs> Punjabi Punjabi. Punjabi Punjabi Dhaba. Oh, it, it was so good. Yeah. So definitely that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now, Roland or Mark? No, I, I know. I, I, they're <laughs> super different. It's like, it's, you cannot no, no, no. compare. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not it's saying. Like apple. I, it's like I, apple and orange. I, my question, my question is not like uh, compare apple with orange. I would, uh, my question is like, do you prefer apple than orange? So Roland or Mark? I cannot choose. Sorry. It's like, <laughs> I remember Aaron is, uh, 
No, I, I honestly, I, I no, you, 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 you are being, you are being generous. Uh, Roland? So Roland, well, choose one. Like, guy. Yeah, like you don't have to explain. Choose for what, one like guy. For, 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 for doing rapping when you're drunk in the bus, it's Roland. Uh, playing chess and discussing history, it's Mark. I don't know for a specific topic, like someone is better, someone someone is not. But um, in general, uh, honestly, it's it's super hard. Okay. Yeah. So now I'll ask <laughs> another name. Okay, yeah. Yer Jericho or 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 Jericho or uh, I don't know Patricia. And Roland will kill me now. <laughs> I compared. <laughs> <laughs> I, in this case i would I, i would i would choose patricia just because i know her really well okay so christina or yana oh, uh, it's, it's again it's <laughs> impossible no no I, it's impossible they're both but, like, but so you can, good i i know they're both good like you can you can choose one like i cannot choose one i i remember yana helped me a lot with my struggles And then she helped, helped everyone a lot. My... Yana helped yeah. everyone a lot. And for, for Christina this. was super helpful as well. So Christina was super helpful to few of the people, and she was pretty asshole with few of the people, if you remember. Why not? <laughs> But Why not? Yana well, was Yana was pretty pretty. Uh, I would say uh, diplomatic. Uh, she was like, she was good with everyone. Uh, we're trying to compare apple and orange here. Uh, it's impossible. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. My my question is not comparing them. My question is like, yeah. what would you prefer most of the time? I like apples and I like oranges. <laughs> like I would not, that. Let's let's put it in this way. I would not <laughs> eating oranges all my life. So Russia right? or United States? Oh, it's hard. I think United States, just because it gives me the opportunity to be myself and like work hard. Would yeah. you be would you be traveling to 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 this part of the world like South Asia? Yes. Like, do you really have a plan? Like, it's it's not like to say it. It's not like that. Like, oh, I have a plan. Like, do you really? When when you're saying <clears throat> when you're saying this part of the like planet, yeah. what area is that? Like South. Like South Asia, South Asia. This part Asia. means our part, South Asia, like Pakistan, definitely... India, Bangladesh, Sri yes. Lanka. India, hundred percent. Sri Lanka, I've been there. I, I covered that. I I've do. been there a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, India for sure. I want to go to North India. Okay. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah. I wanted to go to like Asia, like South Korea and stuff as well, but it's a different part of, of the world. Yeah. Okay. And finally, uh, I'll have this uh, final question to you for today's podcast, and then we will probably finish it up. Um, that yeah. is, um, what if uh, you go back to Russia? Or what if um, the visa issue incurs again and, and you have to go back to Russia? Uh, what would be your plan, number one? And would you be happy or comfortable with that at this point i'm not going to be able to go back to russia um oh you yeah. cannot enter it's, into the country because no of... I, i i can i can but um it's super uncomfortable for me to operate in an environment where i cannot be myself and i'm not asking a lot like i i just you know i want to be honest and i i want to be like loud about what i'm thinking in this case i'm gonna go to jail pretty quickly in russia um okay. so i just i i'm not gonna move back there there are a number of countries i can live in mm -hmm. uh, there is like a balkans area you yeah. may know of like serbia uh, montenegro and like bosnia albania okay. um i can live there or in europe somewhere in germany mm -hmm. and stuff. okay yeah that's great So Pavel, it's it's been a really nice talking to you regarding your career progression and how you survived yeah. the blow of United States and finally you, <laughs> you survived yeah. well and you have a an apartment to leave, you have foods to eat and you have a green card and congratulations for that. 
And but the uh, good, the important stuff is life goes on. We don't know how we ended up in the in the in the end. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So like 10 right years now back... I have an apartment, tomorrow I'm going to be fired. <laughs> or like today you're living in Bangladesh, tomorrow you're going to be hired by, I don't know, like Elon Musk, whatever. Wow. Um, life goes on. Like, like you God just knows. like, I'm, I'm like the CEO of Twitter. And... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I wish, I wish. Yeah. But, but uh, you know... Um, uh if if i talk about the freelancing part uh you know freelancing work freelancing yeah. in freelancing work uh the the south asian people like bangladesh india pakistan then the asian people are actually china uh vietnam this area mm -hmm. they're really doing good but when it comes to like uh sponsoring for someone someone is yes. moving from this country to another country the countries the companies really get gets uncomfortable is it because of the money they have to invest or is it because uh, the money they have to invest is uh, they're confused that whether it will be worth it to invest on 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 these particular people it's it's both it's both it's both yeah. okay like as a, as an american co company um you you would think twice. Do you want to spend? So if you're a big American company, you would not care. It's like mm -hmm. two two k for the H one B or something like that. It's not a big it's nothing, right? Yeah. But small company, you would think twice. Like you're gonna hire this guy and then he's gonna switch job mm -hmm. next week, right? It would suck. So and 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 the same way companies are not hiring people from outside of the United States, and plus it's cultural thing. It it's kind of makes sense to hire um, someone from within the so, country. So, so, uh, within the country, maybe not American citizen or like American permanent resident, right? Yeah. Uh, but still, like, yeah. All right, Pavel, that's that's really great. So uh, I will be uh, definitely keep in touch, and we'll do some couple of more podcasts in coming future, probably if you can manage some time and we will For discuss sure. yeah. more about um, different issues about career progression. And, and I, I really want to discuss about uh, two things later, probably about, about your journey with, with blockchain, because we briefly yeah. covered it. So we'll talk about yeah. like what sort of um, uh, development uh, work you have done for blockchain. And I would really like to know about, uh, about how much programming you are doing right now and what sort of programming language you are using at this moment and how you developed yeah. yourself. So these are the two things we will definitely talk in future. Yeah. And it was really awesome having you with me in my MSG podcast. And I would like to, you know, ask all my audiences to subscribe to my podcast channel. And uh, Pavel is a beautiful guy and a handsome guy with luscious hair and <laughs> <laughs> and with a, with a crazy smile. So one subscribe for this guy. And uh, he's great. Uh, if you uh, want someone to do, you know, technological stuff or technological advice, um, he he's a he's he's a great guy because uh, I have seen I consider him as a smart a mathematician, a philosopher, and <laughs> uh, and no 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 I'm I'm being very honest. <laughs> and finally, and finally, a great friend. So, anyways, so thank you very much. Definitely, Pavel. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay.